regulation. I mentioned uh, compliance. The uh, European Link 2000 now has a compliance table timetable. Uh, new airplanes have to be fitted by January of next year and uh, exist airplanes manufactured uh, prior to the end of this year uh, have until in some cases 2015 to comply. It appears to us that uh, nobody else has a retrofit solution today available. The AFRS 228 box you'll see up in the back uh, has we've added some requirements for functionality to that so we actually have a a solution that will that would apply to probably 10,000 aircraft potentially that are trying to operate in the European airspace. Uh, then we've got a whole bunch of alphabet soup. Uh, ETS is an emissions reporting requirement again in Europe and uh, safety management systems and so forth. These are all data driven requirements that have emerged that, that not only the big guys have to comply with but private operators, uh, uh, business aircraft operators and small airlines all have to comply with them. The airlines, uh, there used to be 1,600. Uh, I think the more accurate number is uh, 1,400 now. Uh, it's a lot, it's a big target. We have 33 or 34, depending on what came in today. Uh, so we don't ex not exactly have the, the entire market share. But uh, the big ones are getting bigger by consolidation, which is not necessarily good news for us because uh, uh, we're the mouse trying to dance with the elephant and when the elephant uh, doubles its size and we don't, uh, the, the dance becomes a little more uh, intractable from our point of view. But the other 1,300 are all uh, the kinds of airlines that, that really need what we do. The small guys, the startups, the people operating in Africa where there's no ground infrastructure are all, are all uh, uh, great opportunities for us. And there are a lot of startups. A anyone who can uh, recite the, the uh, name of the volcano will probably we, Bill, we could probably grant a couple thousand stock options. Somebody could actually stand up and recite the name of the volcano. Uh, we've, the Europeans forget that we've been flying in volcanic ash in North America, particularly Alaska, Northern Canada, and the Caribbean, uh, forever. So, uh, the, but nonetheless, we all saw the effect. There's two things about the volcano lessons learned. One is you see how much effect on the global economy that one event had. I don't remember the percentage and I was telling someone this morning, I lost the article, but there was a, a under 10% and more than 1%, somewhere in that range, I can't remember the exact number, but somebody, the economist or somebody reported what a significant impact the unavailability of air transportation was to the global economy just from that one volcanic event. Obviously, the effect on the airlines, some of whom are our customers, uh, was traumatic, uh, not being able to operate. But on the other hand, uh, our system has the ability to, to add precision to the way in which people could operate in, in a volcanic ash environment, both in terms of mapping the location and also monitoring whether or not the engine has, has ingested the volcanic ash. So we will be uh, doing our usual thing in terms of trying to clarify those requirements and add the capability to the product. And where are the markets, where's the growth? Uh, it's all outside North America. The, uh, the long-term projections for the compound growth rate of civil aviation in North America, the transports, you know, airlines, is 2.5% uh, uh, compound growth rate. You get into China, South Asia, uh, Africa, the Middle East, the uh, the growth rates are in the, the in the some of them almost 10% compound growth rates. So where are we concentrating our efforts? Um, Africa. Uh, Derek is our Africa specialist, and uh, he's doing well. Uh, we have some good opportunities in the Middle East, uh, and some customers in the Middle East, uh, civil and military. A uh, lot of interest in Latin America. Uh, they're facing some regulations that they haven't had to deal with before that uh, we can satisfy. So uh, we're, aviation is a global business. We have to learn how to become a global company, and I think we're, we're doing that quite well. And uh, the, 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 we're going to have to uh, d learn to deal with, with customers that are a long way away, and I think we're doing a decent job as we, as we learn how to do that. Now, finally, uh, we are actually a, what I would consider a significant development in the marketplace. Because of our data streaming d demo, we've actually, people actually know who we are. We're a serious force in our little slice of the market. Um, that was not our vision 
exactly when we decided to undertake this this uh, test and demonstration, but uh, the the fallout that Kent described uh, is, has uh, had that result. So this is the new shape of the market, and uh, we're we're sitting in a much uh, nicer spot than. than we were in the past.